Good morning, boys and girls. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Wherever you find yourself in the world, I'm sure that one of those greetings is appropriate for the time. This is Arzu Mountain Spirit, and I'm coming to you from beautiful downtown Belize. I'm in Punta Gorda, Belize, really enjoying nature, and I wanted to share it with you. So I made this video to bring you into an up-close and personal experience with a wonderful healing plant called the Strongback, scientific name Desmodium Ascendis. There is a stretch at the end of the video that takes you through a tour where you can look at the plant in its own natural environment. Let me introduce you to Strongback, Desmodium Ascendis. Strongback belongs to the genus Desmodium and the species Ascendis. It is a member of the pea family. Strongback is also known as Manayupa, Amorseco, Barba the Boy, Beggar Lice, Berber, Carapicho, Dipinda, Dimukui, Dusa Camira, Hard Man, Hard Stick in Jamaica, <laughs> Margarita, Mundarana, Owono Bocon, Pega Pega, Tick Trefoil, and I'm sure by many other names. Strongback or Desmodium ascendis is a rainforest weedy vine plant native to West Africa and Central America and parts of South America, Peru, and the entire Caribbean, especially Jamaica, where it is used heavily. They've never stopped using Strongback as a primary medicine. Strongback is a perennial herb, and it grows to about three feet tall, maybe a couple of inches less, a couple of inches more. It finds its own space and produces numerous light purple flowers and green fruits in these small bean-like pods. It grows all over Belize. I'm surrounded by it. But it probably also grows near you. You'll find it in open forest, pastures, farms, along the roadsides, in the streets, and on the edges. Always look for strongback along the edges. Strongback is good for the land. Indigenous people discovered this a very long time ago. It's useful as living mulch and as green manure. It's a perfect cover crop. It's able to improve soil fertility by way of nitrogen fixation. It makes good fodder for animals, including the bobwhite, the turkeys, um, hens, <laughs> grouse, deer, cattle, and goats, and probably pigs too. It is loved, absolutely loved by butterflies, but very specifically by these two butterflies. The lesser grass blue and the two barred flasher. Strongback traditional uses include the treatment for consumption and bronchial ailments. It's used mostly in indigenous traditions uh, as lung support. It's been used since always in African tradition, traditional medicine against asthma and digestive disorders, jaundice, for liver support in blood cleansing and detoxification. It's also used as a poultice um, for wound healing and for pain. It's used for nervous disorders, nervous tension, nervousness. It's used to promote milk flow in lactating women. It's used as a lubricant in love matters. That it's taken as a tea. <laughs> it's used as a suppository for uh, vaginal stress, for afterbirth pain, for vaginal, uterine, and urinary tract infections, uh, and for venereal diseases. It's used as an anal suppository and a vaginal suppository. 
Now, science says that strong back or desmodium et sensis, which is their name, <laughs> normalizes liver enzymes. And it's okay to use as a remedy to treat symptoms of hepatitis. Science says strong back is an anti-asthmatic and a bronchodilator, which means it relaxes lung muscles so they don't constrict. Strong back is antihistamine for allergies. Strong back has recently been documented to have analgesic, antispasmodic, and anti-inflammatory actions, which means it relaxes muscles, it alleviates pain, and reduces inflammation. Strong back preparation can be uh, done in several ways. You have your herbal menstruum, which can be water, alcohol, wine, vinegar, oil, honey, or beeswax. Well, you get the idea. Something liquid or liquid-like. <laughs> it could be, depending on which menstruum, it could be an infusion, a tincture, a poultice, a liniment or balm, uh, capsules, uh, or suppositories. Now, with infusions... Uh, an infusion is, is, is just a drink made by placing herbs into hot water. That's all it is. It's just a fancy word. And the preparation is called brewing, like a tea. And it is a tea, which typically involves pouring hot water over plant matter. It is uh, the traditional remedy for asthma, the strong back tea. We also use it for allergies, for blood cleansing, and for detoxifying the body. This is the tea that supports the liver. Now, a strong back tincture, uh, again, a tincture is just a concentrated herbal extract that's made by soaking parts of, of the plant, either the bark, the berries, the leaves, the sticks, the roots, whatever, uh, wherever the medicine is, and placing them in alcohol or vinegar. So the alcohol or the vinegar pulls out the active ingredients in the plant, plants concentrating them as a liquid. I'm going to put a link to a video how to make herbal tinctures in the comment section. And by the way, if you like what you're hearing, please take time now to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The strong back poultice, also called cataplasm, is a soft, moist herbal mashup mass that's spread on a cloth and is placed over the skin or over the affected area. And we use this to treat uh, an aching, inflamed, or painful part of the body. And it can be used on wounds like cuts, not jagged open wounds, but wounds where the skin has come together to close. Uh, that's the appropriate uh, wound that you would use a strong back poultice on. For wounds, you would typically pound one cup of fresh strong back leaves, and then you add the juice of one lime or lemon. <laughs> you mix it all up, and you apply it to the wound, and you bandage it, and you change that every day. Remember, it's alive, so it's going to degrade, and you have to change it every day. Now, the strong back liniments are a little more complex. Liniments are liquid or semi-liquid herbal extract preparations that are used externally for rubbing the body to relieve pain, or sore muscles, sprains, bruises, and skin irritations. They're usually very soothing and traditionally made with oil. We use them for arthritis pain and inflammation. The way you make them is by um, stuffing the dry herb, very simple. Stuff the dry herb into a glass or a container and uh, fill it with warm oil. Then you allow it to sit for three days and it will get stronger every day. <clears throat> I would say after about four weeks or so, you, you strain it and you have yourself a nice, very nice strong back liniment that you can use for pain and just rub your pain away. Strong back capsules now are made from exclusively the powder from made exclusively from the leaf. So when you are making capsules, you use leaf powder only. 
because they have to be crispy and dried. If you're doing it yourself, just make sure that the leaves are crispy, crispy, dried, really dry. You might even uh, try putting them in an oven or exposing them to extra heat just to make sure. Uh, so you fill the capsules with this leaf powder. And the dosage uh, will vary depending on the size of the capsules because they have three or four different sizes. And um, the important thing is that you wouldn't take more than four to five grams of the leaf powder uh, daily. Now, strong back suppositories. Now, suppositories are used for the healing of hemorrhoids mostly, for piles and fissures. But we also use them for vaginal pain and afterbirth pain and for yeast and urinary infections and venereal diseases. So these are the herbal suppositories. And we make them with herb, the mashed up herb or the powder, and beeswax. And then they're shaped into this form and inserted into the body. Once the suppository is inside, it melts, uh, it dissolves, and it releases its medicine. I'm also going to uh, post a, a link to another video, how to make homemade suppositories. Strong back. Great plant, huh? Propagation and harvesting. The best time to harvest strong back is during the full moon or the new moon. Full or new moon is best for harvesting strong back. And we prefer to use the flowering plants. So we pull the plants from the roots and what comes up is what you use. That's what the plant has allowed you to have. The rest of it will always stay in the ground. You, you will not be able to pull a strong back root out. In fact, it's suspected that the name strong back came from needing to have a strong back in order to be able to harvest the herb. <laughs> so the vines, because it's a viney herb, right? So the vines um, must be removed. Because there are other vines that are not strong back that wrap themselves around it. So you have to take those vines off. Make sure that the only leaves that you remain uh, using are the strong back leaves. So we call that de-vining. So you rinse uh, your leaves, or your plant parts, and you wrap them up and go to work. So why? <laughs> why use strong back? Well, first of all, it's easy to find. It's easy to administer. It, and it's highly effective in very low dosages. You don't need a lot. You can get it online. You can get good, reputable, uh, strong back powder online. Also, it's a lack of side effects. It, it's lack of toxic effects. There are no side effects and no toxicity reports. So that makes strong back first in the bush medicine chest for natural remedies. And lastly, because it's an ancestor, it's one with the ancestors, and it was made by our creator. I hope you've enjoyed our tidbit on the strong back, the desmodium et sensis. And I pray that you're doing well and that you're guarding your health, taking care of yourself and your families. Knowing about this plant should be helpful and come in handy at some point. That's why I made this video, and I hope you enjoy it. This is it here sticking out at the edge of your garden. But if you follow it up, you will see that it'll come out somewhere. Here it is again. It'll grow roughly about three feet tall in the air. It's got alternate ovate leaves. They come in threes. One, two, three. Always the big one in the middle and the two to the side. I think we're going to harvest this one. I think this one's ready because the leaves are nice and hardy. You see how it's a little bit waxy on the top and then it's light and smoky in the back. Strong back can take over your entire planting bed like what it tried to do here. But if you use the plant, if you use it, you won't regret it. You'll be continually cutting it and you'll really come to appreciate its, its rapid growth. Uh, it got on my clothing, see? Can you find the strong back in this picture? <laughs>